read the labels on foods when you go shopping? I do. And what do we usually look for? This, 100% natural. Why? Because it makes us feel safer. Now we know it's all natural, it must be good for me. It's probably also healthy. Because we have a stereotype in our head that healthy is natural. Also, we have stereotypes about the things that are good for us just in general. These are the things that are good for us. We all know that. We also have stereotypes about what are the things that are bad for us, right? Some people also feel that if this is good for me, then obviously this is even more healthy. And this must be really, really healthy. So let's take a look at those stereotypes. First of all, is there really an artificial and a natural world? Second of all, if something is natural, does it necessarily make it more healthy? And third of all, if I eat twice as much of it, am I going to get more healthy? What we see here is vitamin C, the structure of vitamin C, when it is purified from a natural source. On the next slide, we see vitamin C that is synthesized artificially. You see the difference? You don't? Well, let's take another look at it. You see the difference? You don't see it because there is none. Vitamin C is just vitamin C, just like this piece of Lego is a piece of Lego, whether it came from a Ferrari, Darth Vader, or Mickey Mouse. There's a reason for this stereotype. There's a historical reason for it. Up till the 19th century, scientists were convinced that the world was made up of organic and inorganic things. It was called vitalism. Until Friedrich Wöhler challenged this, by synthesizing a number of different organic compounds out of inorganic. But it wasn't until the early 20th century when scientists finally concluded that there is only one natural world. Let me give you an interesting example. Tramadol is a widely used painkiller. It was first synthesized by German scientists in the 1970s. Here is the chemical pathway, and if you don't mind, I wouldn't go into the details of it right now. What makes it interesting is that last year, it was found in large quantities in the root of the pincushion tree in Africa. So, my question is, is tramadol an artificial compound or a natural compound? The bark of the willow tree has been used for thousands of years by people all over the world to treat pain and fever. Until the end of the 1800s, when a few chemists purified it, put it in a pill, and called it aspirin. Now, it's an interesting debate to consider that during the process, when you take out a compound from a plant and you put it into a pill, which is exactly the point when it loses its naturalness and becomes artificial. Most people, when given an option to choose between a pill and a herbal medicine, will immediately choose the herbal medicine because it's natural. On the other hand, if we look at almost 90% of the drugs that people consume on the planet, they are derived in some form for a plant. Even 50% of Western medicine, prescription Western medicine, has some plant origin. But there was a reason why we put it in a pill. When you put it in a pill, you have a very well-defined quantity of a purified ingredient, where you know what it does. When you use herbs, you have a big problem with dosage. You don't know what soil it grew on, how much sunshine or water it got, you don't know how it was stored, there are stability issues. But most of all, all herbs contain a thousand other chemicals that all have some kind of effect on our body, not always beneficial. But unlike drugs, herbs do not come with a package insert. So most people presume that they're safe and they don't have any side effects. The truth is, herbs have side effects just as drugs do. Here's just a list of a couple of commonly used herbs and the side effects that they have. Thousands of people around the world die because they're not aware of that. Now let's talk about the things that are really bad for us. Let's talk about poisons. Well, let me tell you, when it comes to poisons, human chemists are no match for nature. All of the deadliest poisons we know, they're all natural products. The best that we know, the strongest poison, is called botulinum toxin. Its subtype H is so toxic that less than 10 grams could kill every human being on the planet. To put that in perspective, that's approximately the weight of a single one-pound coin. The best man-made poison is about a million times less potent than that. 
To look at it from a different angle, what you see here is definitely 100% natural. It's the variola virus, or smallpox. It has killed over a billion people until we made this obviously synthetic thing that was the vaccine that eradicated it. Now let's talk a little bit about quantities. Once a friend of mine tried to convince me to buy a food supplement, and the argument she used was, when you eat one tablespoon of this, it's just like eating 80 kilos of raspberries. 80 kilos of raspberries? I asked her, have you ever tried to eat 80 kilos of raspberries? What do you think you'd feel after that? I mean, even if you survived, you'd probably have at least an ulcer. Even things like oxygen or water are toxic. Every year, believe it or not, people die from water toxicity. Like this lady who took part in a who can drink more water contest <laughs> and died from drinking six liters of water. Six liters doesn't even sound so much, right? Other cases include parents who figured the best way to punish their misbehaving kids is to make them drink a lot of water. I wonder how they came up with that one. Or people who just try fantastic diets that they've downloaded from the internet, or just runners who drink too much water during their marathon. As Paracelsus put it very wisely 500 years ago, everything's a poison, it's just a matter of quantity. You may say, okay, this is just plain common sense. True, but... Did you know that over 50,000 people are hospitalized in the U.S. alone every year from vitamin poisoning? Thinking that if vitamins are good, then more vitamins are better? Most of them are kids. And every year, several people die in the U.S. from vitamin overdosing. And from all compounds ever tested, let them be synthetic or natural, more than half of them cause cancer in rodents if given in large quantities. On the other hand, if we use small quantities, some of the strongest poisons, such as snake venoms, makes some of our best medicines. And all the healthy fruits and vegetables they eat, let me tell you, they all have carcinogens in them, every single one. Just the quantities are so small, you don't need to worry about it. Or if you're worried about pesticides, 99% of pesticides you ever consume come from plants. They're made by plants to protect themselves against insects, disease, or predators. Even botulinum toxin, the strongest toxin we know is used as a drug in small quantities for a number of different indications, including migraine. It's also used in the cosmetics industry as Botox to make women look young and beautiful. Right? Well, not always. I told you, here's the evidence. Quantity does matter. So as a conclusion, don't be afraid to question your stereotypes. And remember, the properties of any chemical depends on its structure, not of its origin. And natural doesn't always mean something is healthy. And if you want to answer the question, good or bad, or what's healthy or unhealthy, that question doesn't make sense until you answer at least the questions, who is it for, in what quantity, and when. So consume everything in moderation, and use your plain common sense. Thank you.